Hello, my name is Joseph Diazidui. And a while back, I made a video on the analog devices ADALM2000. That's a USB data acquisition system in regards to its oscilloscope feature. And I made mention of the inputs to the oscilloscope are of a differential style and how that can be advantageous on taking certain measurements. Now I guess I should go into the differences between a single-ended and a differential input. Single-ended inputs uh, are usually single inputs that have a common point or common reference, usually ground. And a prime example of that would be an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope usually has a B and C connector on it, and the outer body of that connector is tied to the chassis ground. So if you have two cha a two-channel oscilloscope, both outer bodies are tied to the same point, chassis ground. Same thing for a four-channel oscilloscope and so on. Well, because of that, that means any voltage readings you're going to be taking are in reference to ground. Now, an example of a differential input is a voltmeter. Now, the bench mounted voltmeters, those are floating devices. So if you look at their input connectors, they're usually labeled high and low. They are not tied or referenced to ground. So in other words, you can take measurements across a device without any fears of grounding out the device or shorting out other devices. So those are the main differences between a single-ended input and a differential input. We take a look at the oscilloscope. In this case, it's an MSOX 3000 series oscilloscope made by Keysight. The BNC connectors, again, this outer portion here, the outer body here, is tied to chassis ground. And in this case, that device has, uh, oscilloscope has four inputs. Closer view, here's a schematic of it. And you can see we have the center input pins. And again, the outer bodies are tied to the chassis ground. Now, an example of a differential, uh, you know, if we look at it in terms of the B and C cables first, we'll see standard issue B and C cable has a red lead and a black lead. So if I'm using two channels, those two black leads are tied together internally to the scope, whereas the red leads are independent for each channel. Example of a differential input again is the digital multimeter. As we see here, the input pins, one's labeled high, one's labeled low. But this is a floating device. It is not connected to ground. This little ground symbol that you'll see here on most digital multimeters is just a reference that point can go up as high as 500 volts peak in reference to a ground, a zero volt source. So you can literally have 500 volts on the low input of a, a voltmeter. Again, depends on the model number that you have. So let's take a look at the advantages of a differential input. Here's a simple circuit, it's an RLC circuit, and it's powered by a signal source. And I want to measure the voltage across that resistor. As we can see, that resistor is the middle component. It is not tied to the ground input uh, node. If we look at it, so one way we can do it is, you know, we take our signal generator and we take our oscilloscope and we want to measure the input to the circuit. So we'll set that up on channel one of the oscilloscope. And if we look at it thinking it is acting like a voltmeter, we would normally say, okay, then I take channel two and I wire it across the resistor itself. Much like you would attach a voltmeter. 
but because these two leads are tied together internally, we've pretty much shorted out the capacitor of this circuit. So we're saying now, by if we wire it this way, node zero is actually up here, cutting out the capacitor completely. So that's something we don't want to do. So how do I get around that and using the bench oscilloscope to measure the voltage across that resistor? Uh, first method could be you can buy, purchase a differential oscilloscope probe. A good differential oscilloscope probe would set you back probably about $900 to $1,000 up. So that's a little steep for the average person. So one method you can do it is using the math features. Most digital oscilloscopes now that you can purchase have some form of math feature where you can subtract the channels. So to do that, you would take channel one of the oscilloscope and hook it up to, in this case, we'll call it node two, or one end of the resistor. And then we would take channel two and hook it up to, in this case, node three, the opposite end of the resistor. And then you would go to the oscilloscope's math features and say you want to subtract channel 2 from channel 1. And when you do this, here's a circuit that I wired up to do it. And you see we have the signal generator going in to the circuit, and that's our inductor. I have channel 1 of the oscilloscope hooked to one end of the resistor. Channel 2 of the oscilloscope hooked up to the other end of the resistor. And as you see, all the black leads, two including the signal generator leads, are all wired to the common ground point. When you take the measurements using the math feature, you'll see on channel 1, which in this case is the yellow, is the signal going to the resistor. And channel 2 is the signal that's coming out of the resistor, and that is the green channel. By performing the math feature, we can get the difference. So we're taking, subtracting channel one, uh, channel two from channel one, and the magenta or purple colored line is the actual waveform for the voltage across that component. So that was a relatively low cost, inexpensive way of doing a differential measurement using the oscilloscope. The one disadvantage to that is if you want to reference it somehow back to the original signal, you can't do that because you're tying up the two channels. If you do have the advantage of a four-channel uh, oscilloscope, then that's not a problem. So the next part we want to look at is how we can use the ADM 2000's differential oscilloscope input to do that measurement a lot easier. Okay, now we want to use the ADALM2000 and wire that up in our circuit using uh, the differential inputs on the oscilloscope. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take the yellow lead for the signal generator and attach that to the input of the circuit. The signal generator has to be referenced to ground, so for that I'm just going to take one of the uh, black leads. I'm going to tie that to the ground bar, which is also connected to the one end of the capacitor. Now, waveform uh, oscilloscope channel one, which is the orange wire, I want to use that to look at the input signal. So I will attach that there. It's complementary input, uh, one negative, uh, which is the other end of the differential input. I'm going to hook that up to ground because it has to be hooked somewhere. It cannot be left floating. The two oscilloscope channels on this device are independent. So by my attaching the negative input of channel 1 to ground, it has no bearing or effect on channel 2. 
So for channel two, I'm going to take the blue wire and I'm going to chain attach that to the input side of the resistor. And then I'm going to take the complementary channel two negative input and I'm going to attach that to the other side of the resistor. Okay, so now I have my circuit wired up. A little bit hard to see, but there it is. And next we'll go into the Scopey software and see how things work. Okay, I've started up the Scopey software. I'm going to select a device and connect. As it runs through its calibration routine, in a moment, it should be up. We'll set up the signal generator. And as in the other uh, circuit I did earlier uh, with the real oscilloscope and signal generator, I want the amplitude of my sine wave to be 2 volts peak to peak. And remember, when you key in a number, you have to hit enter. We're going to leave the frequency at 1 kilohertz. No DC offset, no phase differences. And we're just going to click run. Open up the oscilloscope. And by default, the time base is set to 1 microseconds. I have a 1 kilohertz sine wave, so I'm going to change up that to probably about 200 microseconds. That should give us enough on the screen. Right. And I'm going to use both channels, channel 1 and channel 2, and they're both on. I'm going to click Run. And there we go. We see our two waveforms going to adjust the voltage probably to 500 millivolts per division for both channels. And again, when you want to change the feature for a particular channel, you click on these buttons here. There's channel 1. There's channel 2. And we see on channel 1 is the input signal. And channel 2 is the difference signal uh, across that resistor. That was all done doing minimal wiring with two channels. So we'll take a snapshot and then we'll compare both waveforms. Okay, now we're looking at uh, the data captured on the left from an oscilloscope and the data on the right captured from the analog devices ADALM2000. On the left, the yellow trace is channel 1 and the green trace is channel 2. So channel 1 was one side of the resistor, channel 2 was the other side of the resistor. Again, the magenta color signal is the difference of those two channels. So channel 2 being subtracted from channel 1. On the right, we have the data from the M2K and channel 1, the orange trace, shows the waveform that's coming out of the signal generator into your circuit. And channel 2, the magenta line, is showing the actual voltage across that resistor, a true differential measurement without performing any form of math function whatsoever. It's done internally. And we see there's an offset a phase shift, same thing here. So we can see here how the M2K has that advantage of using having differential inputs and making life certain measurements easier. So I hope that was helpful and explaining the differences between single-ended and differential inputs. Thank you.